Relay radar is the instantaneous transmission of radar information to remote points. As illustrated here, it offers a means of extending ship search coverage by use of a radio link between the ASV plane and a ship or ground station. The ASV plane uses its radar for ship search. With the radio link, radar information which appears on the plane scope is radioed to a distant point and appears on this remote scope at the same time. A plan position indicator, or PPI, is used to display the radar information. At the right is an actual scope photograph taken at the ground station. It is to be compared with the chart of the region shown at the left. The reliable range of present ship search sets is quoted as 15 miles. On the same basis, the reliable range of the experimental relay link used here is 50 miles. The range of this ASV equipment against destroyers is about 20 miles. Thus, by use of this combination, an area with a radius of 70 miles can be reliably scouted and the information instantaneously presented on shipboard. The plane used for these tests is a JRB-2. It flies experimental missions from East Boston Airport. The nose has been altered to carry an ASV spinner. A complete radar picture throughout the 360 degrees is obtained. The transmitting antenna used for the relay link is 29 inches long. It is mounted on top of the fuselage toward the tail. The experimental ASV equipment shown here has the scope and spinner control box at the top, indicator and receiver below these with the modulator control box below the receiver. The relay equipment consisting of the transmitter power supply, the synchronizer, and the FM transmitter is added. No major alteration of ASV equipment is needed. Connections are made between various points in the relay boxes and the indicator. A gearbox connected to the spinner is not shown. The total weight of the added relay equipment in this experimental unit is 50 pounds. The receiving equipment at the base station consists of two racks containing the scope at the left and the receiver and synchronizer on the right. This type of dipole antenna is used to receive the relayed signals. The receiving station is in Boston. The crew takes its place at the start of the mission. The operator turns on the equipment and makes adjustments. The observer watches the scope and interprets the pattern. The center of the scope will be the plane's position. The observer can tell from the pattern that the plane is now flying seven miles south of the tip of Cape Cod. The radio line at 145 degrees is a course marker transmitted to the base station scope to show the heading of the plane. From charts, the observer knows the plane is 52 miles from his station in Boston. The plane is now flying a 330 degree course as indicated by the marker. Plymouth Harbor is to the port. Note the harbor detail. The range circles are five miles apart. The plane is now making a turn to port. This scope pattern at the base station is stabilized so that north is up, regardless of changes in the course of the aircraft. As in normal ASV, the presentations become blurred and strong signals are received only along the axis of the plane because the ASV spinner is tipped during banking. To stabilize the scope pattern in azimuth, a flux gate compass, not included in the weight estimate, is used in the plane. 
As the plane completes the turn and levels out, the original presentation reappears. The orientation of the various signals has been preserved, whereas in normal ASV, the pattern would have rotated. The plane is now approaching Plymouth Harbor. The observer can change range scale of the scope at any time independent of the ASV operator in the plane. For greater magnification close to the plane, he switches from the 30 to the 10 mile range. The harbor detail shows up very nicely, showing the L-shaped breakwater and the spit of land farther inshore. The range circles are two miles apart. During this flight, the plane flew at an altitude of 3,500 feet. For a radio link range of 100 miles, it must fly at an altitude of at least 6,000 feet. After turning north by east, a convoy is sighted. It appears as a momentary flash, due north at 25 miles. The range circles are five miles apart. One suspects this to be a convoy from the offshore position and the extent of the signal. Since the persistence on a cathode ray tube is difficult to photograph, these signals are more easily seen and recognized by an actual observer than in these photographs. The plane is now changing course to approach the convoy on the inshore side. Here again, the turning may be followed by the change in position of the course marker. Since this is a turn to port, strong signals are obtained from the region immediately under the port side of the plane. When level flight is established, the coastline and convoy can again be seen. The shoreline from Plymouth to Boston and Cape Ann is now recognizable. In regions such as this, the observer can immediately recognize the position of the plane and base station from a knowledge of land detail. Where land detail is absent, a type of beacon recognition signal to identify the base station can be used. A short time later, the plane is off Boston Harbor with the convoy seven to 10 miles to starboard. The range circles are still five miles apart, making a total range of 30 miles visible on the scope. The observer can plot the position of the convoy by use of recognizable land points. He can estimate its size from the spread of the signals in range and in azimuth. After a change in course and a closer approach to the convoy, the operator switches to the 10-mile range. The individual ships in the convoy are now resolved. The plane is flying about five miles offshore and two miles from the nearest ship. The shoreline detail is very good, showing every little indentation. After passing the convoy, the plane returns on the offshore side. Here again, the number and disposition of the ships are clearly available to the base station observer. The ships are spread out between five and 10 miles in range from the plane. At this instant, they center about 50 degrees relative and 300 degrees true bearing. This is the convoy as seen from the co-pilot's window. The shoreline is about 12 miles away, just visible in the distance. On completion of the mission, the plane heads for its base at East Boston Airport, the convoy still visible behind the plane. The course marker shows the approach as being made on the south side of the airport. An experienced observer can recognize each landmark in the harbor. All of these scope pictures were taken at the base station, while at times the plane was as much as 50 miles away.
Relay radar thus makes primary radar information instantaneously available to remote command points. 